Hey, photo world, welcome back to another episode here on TakingTalkPics.com. This is another episode from the former podcast. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join the email list. Let's get to that 1,000 subscriber marker so that way I can add a new video every single week. Enjoy. Hey, photo world, take and talk pics. This is episode 42 with fashion photographer Paul Audia. Dig what you do and, and do what you dig, because otherwise life is too short. Hey, Photo World, today's featured guest is Paul Audia. Paul, are you ready to rock today? I'm ready to rock and roll. Awesome, and roll, I love it. Paul Audia is a Chicago-based beauty and fashion photographer who also expands his creativity beyond the still image. His video work is equally impressive. Paul has been published in countless magazines and websites. His award-winning work proves his mastery with lighting both in studio and on location. Paul, welcome to Taking Talk Picks. Oh, thank you. If you could see me right now, I'd be blushing. <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll hear it in your in your voice then for the podcast people out there. <laughs> right. So, can you share with Photo World a little bit more about you and what you're doing? Because I I told them very little about what you have going on with your photography. Hmm. Well, it's kind of uh, like all over the place. Um, a lot of it is coming into video, corporate video right now, and. Um, the photography uh, is is doing well too, so it's kind of a mix mash of uh, video and photography. And I, I come from a background of video too, so it kind of was a natural progression into it. And I like both of them. It's hard to give up one or the other, and yeah. sometimes that's good, and sometimes that's bad. So, when it gets a little bit easier for those who understand video and do it with DSLRs, because I see all these videographers who think they need a DSLR to do their video, but they don't know enough about the camera and how the lenses work and, you know, where the ISO limitations really lie and uh, things just get messy fast. And I, I feel like they need better training on, on that possibility. If you're not doing photography and you're doing video, you need to learn the DSLR if you're going to choose that. Cause I think people jump into it a little too quickly. I agree very, very much so, but uh, it's, it's becoming the way of the world. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah. Either yeah, I mean, embrace it or, <laughs> or get out of the business almost. Yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, take what you can with it and, you know, either supplement what you're doing or, you know, add it to what you can offer. Yeah, with 4K, 8K coming out, all these other advancements in technology, it's uh, almost a given that you need to be involved in it. And it, I think uh, I've been saying this for about two or three years now, but I think that the Internet and the web is all going to be based on a lot of videography not mm -hmm. that i still love that still image because i do right uh but uh a lot of it is changing the way that we do so i think you know that also has to change the way that you you become a business person and and also a photographer so before we get into your story a little bit deeper can you share with photo world a little bit of inspiration a quote or a mantra that you live by or run your business by Yep. Uh, you know, uh, years ago I was in uh, France. It was in Paris. And I got the opportunity to go to the Salvador uh, Dali Museum. They have a real nice one uh, in Montmartre. And uh, so I went in, looked at his stuff, thought it was kind of cool. I mean, he's really out there or was out there. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I bought a T-shirt. I saw it on one of his quotes up there. And it says, everything alters me, but nothing changes me. And I thought, you know, what what a what a great way of thinking and a great part of life. I, what I take it as, it's you are who you are. Mm -hmm. And um, you have all these uh, things that, that alter you because of all the experiences that you have and people you meet and all the things that you do. But um, ultimately, you, you are the person that you are born to be. And that's the best way to do it, just to be genuine. And, you know, you can... And, you know, grow and alter a little bit of who you are, but don't completely change who you are for what you're doing. So I think that's that's an awesome quote to to get out there and share with Photo World. I'll tell you one more quick story too. When yeah. I was uh, when I came to Chicago to do uh, to go full time into commercial and advertising stuff, I uh, I I did exactly the opposite of that. I, I tried to be whoever the art director wanted me to be, and it was like a dog chasing his tail. <laughs> And uh, I call it analysis paralysis, you know, so you end up just overanalyzing what everybody thinks 
that or tells you that you should be and instead of being true to yourself. Uh, I, I was a victim of that too. I started that way. I think a lot of people in the photo world out there do that where it's like, okay, I, I see the successful people and what they're doing and I hear what the clients want. I got to do this. I got to do it that way. And then we kind of get wrapped up in the mistake of trying to find who we are and, and we never get there, or at least we don't get there for very long. And then once we start realizing, ah, oh, just be ourselves, that's, that's interesting how that just changed everything. And it's so much easier to be me instead of somebody else. It's always a fine balance between making sure you produce what the client wants, but also you give them what you're there for. Exactly. All right. So, Paul, we're going to back it up a little bit. What actually started the career? I mean, what was the interest that sparked it enough to pick up a camera and say, I'm going to pursue this full time? Uh, it started when I was pretty young and my parents had a uh, little Kodak Instamatic. That's how far back I go. And, uh, they asked me, to, you know, they needed someone to take a picture of them and their family or their, not their family, but their friends. And so I picked it up and I did the photograph and looked at it. And, you know, after I got the film back, you know, uh, I thought, oh, this is awesome. And then I harbored those feelings for a long time and went directed myself more towards radio and was in radio for about six years. And then someone else in, at the radio station was involved in photography. And I started learning with them and going to different um, uh, different functions. And, and like the PP of A had uh, things in, in the Pennsylvania area. And I just, I was a sponge. I learned everything that I could from anybody that I could and uh, continued to do so today yeah but that's how it all kind of started it came uh, um when i when i was even doing sports in high school um you know we do a homecoming photograph and uh, i was looking at cool ideas going hey that i'm telling the photographer and the high school photographer hey how long we do this and maybe hey what do you think about like going over here and the photographer would go oh that's a great idea and so then uh after i went into the radio thing and got out, uh, I went full-time photography. Those little natural moments where you see it and somebody who's already being paid to do the job doesn't, that's, that's always a fun little experience, especially early on at a couple like that it's, it's a good learning experience yeah. too. Cause yeah. I, I go back and even uh, when I had a portrait studio, uh, I, um, I learned a lot from the interns mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we think, uh, you know, what happens is you, you start thinking a certain way and you think that that's the only way that it can be done. And, uh, you learn from people that don't have that, like a child, a firstborn child doesn't know how to color inside the boxes. They think of things outside of it. So, uh, which is, uh, a good lesson. So you, you think always thinking outside of the box and, and how you can make things work and listening to what other people say. Right, right. And then uh, you said the, the Kodak Instamatic, and I just had to pull mine off the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I got it That's sitting cool. right up here. Uh, ah. So, yeah, Photo World, I'm sorry. I don't have the video for you to enjoy that, but that's all right. <laughs> when, we're, when we're talking about learning, like you said, you learn from interns uh, at times, and you just – we're always learning. I mean, we can't not be learning or else we're, we're doing horrible. If we aren't, we just give up on it. But as we're learning, there's high moments, there's low moments, there's good, there's bad, and we learn from the bad moments, or at least I do, and I think Photo World does, and I'm sure you have. Can you share a story, a time when uh, a learning moment, a failure moment might have come along, and you're better for it now? How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a lot of those. But, uh, one in particular, uh, I was uh, trying to market myself to do some work with the Merchandise Mart in the Apparel Center when... Uh, we were still shooting. It was just at the edge of um, of digital. It was still com was just coming in, and it wasn't real um, common at this point. So, uh, one of my lenses on my Hasselblad was broke, and uh, I was shooting thirty five millimeter on one and two and a quarter on another with black and white. And the first job that I have was to shoot for uh, a runway production, and it was going to be used in W magazine. And so, uh, you know. I was very confident that I could do it, but if you remember about film cameras and leaf shutters, I didn't do a check of the leaf shutter. And I think as I, after I took like two photographs, the leaf broke off inside of the lens. So then it kind of like, it's like a drag shutter all the time. So nothing came up. I mean, it was, that was usable. So, um, and I had to go, uh, and beg and plead with them. And just, I told them the truth, what had happened. And, um, I ended up, uh, you know, telling them I wouldn't charge them for that shoot, obviously. And I, if they would give me one more chance, 
I would like to try it again and I wouldn't charge him for that shoot and um, and just to give me the opportunity. So I, I was pretty persistent on it and 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 very humble. But uh, um, they, they ended up giving me another chance at it. And then I shot for the, a lot of the runway and stuff at the Merchandise Mart had for probably almost 10 years, had a space in the Merchandise Mart uh, and one in the Apparel Center. And so that was, a, that was a big moment. I thought, you know, one of the things where the curtain opens and you're not ready <laughs> or yeah. something happens. Yeah. So that was one of them. No, exactly. There's a lot of them. But, but solving it the way you did, just doing what you could to salvage it uh, on the one side and then make it right, you know, for the next step. And most people will try to beg forgiveness and give the money back if they have to, but then they, they think it's all over. So they're too scared to take the chance and say, let's just try it again. And, and I, I will get it. Let me show you. And I think that's uh, that's a fast learn for you to make that decision to to do that quickly uh, in the moment to say, Let, let's do this and then actually accomplish it because you never know what can come of it. And and a lot of people are too scared of the rejection that, that they don't even try. So I think uh, Photo World, you should be inspired that you can keep pushing a little bit further into even the bad things and see if you can make some good out of it. We're, we're all going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. Everybody makes mistakes. It, it doesn't matter what level you are, uh, but it, it will happen. And and you know, I, and sometimes they work out great. I mean, sometimes they don't work out as good, and you just move on to the next client. But still being humble enough to tell them that you you made the mistake, I right. think, is the important part. Yeah, yeah. So when you're considering your photography, the process that you have, uh, whether it's from initially reaching out to a client or them reaching out to you, or up to the delivery of the images or the the video, what's one important practice that really stands out in every single job you do? I think one of the most important things is do what you say you're going to do, deliver what you're going to deliver, and then take it a step beyond that. And that's what I try to do. So if you you say, okay, here's your job, uh, this is what we want, and and there's a lot of clients that don't want more than what they ask, and it's very difficult because. I think, you know, you owe it to that person to see something differently. And it's those balances that we talked about earlier in the show. So um, I think it's more about just being honest with yourself, doing what you know that you can do, give them what they what they want, and then give them more. There has been a saying of under promise and over deliver, but I think you're taking it to a, an even better level where it's not under promise, but just promise you know don't set the expectations so low know you can do the job right know you can achieve what they're looking for but then over deliver on top of that and i think that's a leg up that's a big step up from the under promise over deliver idea so paul we have a wide range of photographers listening could you please share with photo world one thing that you think would lead to growth and success in their photography business regardless of their current level today that's a pretty loaded question you know because we're, we're all different if i were to say you know i'd go back to what we what we said earlier, you know, you shoot to make money, you know, you obviously have to please the client, but Mm -hmm. you also photograph and the things that you show, the things that you do or the things that you're passionate about are the things that you show that you put online, that you put on your marketing pieces that you put on, uh, that people will recognize you for. And if, if it's difficult to do, because uh, sometimes you're always trying to think of what someone else is like, but I really think that the key is to is to put the things up, show people the work that you're really passionate about, whether it's uh, you know a runway or a, a landscape or a portrait, and let that define who you are. Right. Just be authentic, be genuine, and that'll help find your style. Yes. I, I mean, I think that's great. Like so many people get wrapped up in the idea of looking at other photographers and trying to emulate what they're doing, uh, thinking that's what people want, and it's it is at that time but when you start looking at other photographers that way you look at other success stories out there th- their clients already exist and they already know about that photographer that that ship has already sailed kind of thing i mean it's it's been done before you know so you have to innovate and keep creating on your own and i i mean i think that's really good advice to to do that and remind us that because we get wrapped up in just seeing the next greatest thing on Instagram. And then what, what can we do to try to get that same look? And uh, we just get stuck. Well, I think it's always good to learn 
that, you know, to, I mean, we're all products of our environment and, and photographs that we've seen. And, you know, so there's always a part of that copying that's instilled in us because that's who we are. Right. Right. But, um, I think you, you learn that, but then you let it go. So you learn all your skills, you learn everything. It's like being a, a, a master, uh, at uh, karate or, uh, you know, a black belt, uh, you know, if you were in, I'm going to equate this to a, 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 a boxing match. So if you have to think about your next move where you're in a ring, you're going to get beat up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. Uh, and if someone that is a, uh, um, in, in photography, if you have to think constantly out loud about, I mean, it almost has to become inherent. And, you know, you have it, it becomes part of you so that you're moving in a and I mean, you're thinking, but you're not moving. You're not thinking out loud and consciously. You're thinking because that's you're thinking more instinctively because it yes. becomes second nature and you can move through the, the skill motions much, much faster than, you know, oh, what do I have to have my settings at and how do I pose again? It's just no, no, no. That all becomes very natural. And then the new things can spawn off of the what you've attributed to become the basic basics in your skill set, you know, and, and everybody's basics, their, their toolbox that they take with them is different from the next guy or girl, you know, and, uh, it's, it's trying to look a little bit outside of that and, and alter what we know to, to create something that we haven't seen before. Learn to be a master of your craft and then be, and then let it go and become a child again. I like that. I really like that, you know, that because be my, it's the innocence. It's yes. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's totally the innocence. That's a good way to put it. it is the innocence that, that the passion that creates who you are and what you see. And when we're, when we're creating, when we're moving through our businesses and our, our skills and finding our style, we have these moments that kind of become highlights in our careers. And, uh, I, I don't think there's just one aha moment, but I think there's multiples and it's kind of this light bulb that goes off. And once you start making that change or once you start embracing that difference, uh, things start to take a really good positive spin in your business. Can you recall a time where something like that happened to you? I don't think there's one time. I think there's a lot of aha right. moments that yeah. happen every day. But uh, the biggest uh, thing that I, I, I can recall remembering that uh, really – made me feel more comfortable with myself, let's say, is that your biggest competitor is yourself, not the next photographer, not the guy that's down the street or girl that's down the street. You are your own biggest competitor. It's not healthy mentally or otherwise to compete with others. It, you know, you are what you are. And if we, you take that as, you know, if you don't do the things that you know are right, and we all do that. I mean, it's like the hardest thing to do is like is to control yourself. And yet you want to control everybody else. So if you can if you're able to control yourself and what you do and how you do it and and your marketing and everything else that you do to become that that photographer or videographer, whoever you want to be, and you realize that that's that you're that you're fighting with yourself more than you're fighting with someone else, then I think that relaxes you, that lets you open to the universe and the better things start happening to you. And you're not upset all the time with, because someone else got a job, you're happy for them. Yeah. I, I totally relate to that. Uh, just in the, my athletics, I, I used to be a competitive swimmer and for 13 years, that's what I was doing. And yeah, you race against others, but you can get out of the water winning first and being so ticked off because you didn't beat your last time. And it's the same kind of thing. You have to compete with yourself uh, you know, first and foremost, and then the competition around you isn't really competition. It's just network. It's just, you know, these other photo friends to have out there, you know, that you can relate to or pass jobs to or have jobs passed to you from, uh, you know, I think that's a really good way to look at it, that if you can, you're only as good as your next picture, you know, the, yep. the last one is already done and you got to see what you can do, do better, do now. So I, I think that's a really good way of looking at it. Do you want to know a big secret about photography? I want to know all the secrets, so yes, please. <laughs> okay. The secret is there are no secrets. <laughs> it's like there aren't any. There, you know, it's out there for you to learn and for you to and 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 
you know, and this happened when I was in radio and I was trying to learn more about photography and this other uh, disc jockey and I were trying to learn different styles of photography and methods. And I asked him about it. He said, I'm not telling you that. And I thought, you're kidding. And I thought, I will never be like that in my life because, you know, ultimately it's not, it's, it's part of what you know, but it's part of what you bring to the table in your, in your mind and what you're capable of doing than, than the next guy. So that goes back to the same thing. There are no secrets in photography. They're all out there for you. That's the big secret. And Photo World, I can tell you, Paul's telling the truth, because when I first met him, I was a student at College of DuPage, where I now am an instructor. And, you know, he was so nice to stop by and hang out and, and meet the the professional practice class that they teach and kind of give us some ideas and insight to what the real world of the working photographer is like. And, you know, just you've been how many years have been going to visit the school? Do you do you know? I think the one that I came to that you were uh, you were there it was the first one that I came to. And so was, how many years ago was that? Uh, for geez, that was like six Ten years, years ago, six, six, seven, maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it's been, been that, that amount of time. So. All right. Good. I'm a trendsetter. I like it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> awesome. No, I mean, but the fact that you're willing to divulge the secrets, cause like you said, there are none. So what, what's there to really hide? Um, you know, it was just so helpful and inspiring to see what, what a professional is doing, you know, and, and it got me pumped and i think everybody in my class designed their business cards to look like yours and <laughs> and you know we just really loved the oh the one image on one side and it's vertical how awesome is that uh so all these cool little things but you've been continuing that and sharing the information and education with others and and you're here today with photo world so i really appreciate you sharing the stories and and bringing it out to us if you Thank could you. bring us one more nugget, one big piece of information, and pass it on to Photo World, what is the best advice you have ever received during your photography career so far? Best advice that I've ever received. You know, it goes back to what I said earlier. You know, uh, be true to yourself. Be passionate about what you do, whether it's uh, you know photographing a um, uh, a tin can or a child or a dog or uh, an advertising agency ad or <clears throat> you know it doesn't matter it's it's all relative and treat people the way you want to be treated yeah there's there's this really nice theme running through today's episode in this interview that it's just be real you know just be you go out and interact with others hopefully being themselves and doing what they need to do because in the end no matter what industry of photography you're in you're working with people and you got to be able to accomplish that interaction you know, yeah. the, the pictures are one side of it, but you got to be able to, to work with others and, and being real, being genuine, being yourself and, and staying true to that. That's never going to hurt you. I mean, being true to yourself is probably the most important thing mm -hmm. and being good to others. Let's all let's all sing Kumbaya. Too. <laughs> it's time, right? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. No, I mean, it's kind of the way it is. So, so really, I mean, that's the way I think anyway. I try to. If you had to start over, not that I'd wish this on anybody, because I know how difficult it was for me to start and. Uh, it's similar stories all around, but if you had to start over and you still have the same gear and the same knowledge in photography that you currently have today, what would you do first to start your new photography business? Another good question. So if I were to start my photography business over again, I would probably learn more about uh, business management and be a better business person because that was my hardest lesson was understanding how to be profitable, how to get a job, and still make money at it. Because ultimately, if you don't make money, you won't be in business very long. Right. And um, you know, there are there. You know what? This is this is a good thing. There's it's never black and white, and that's something else that I learned along the way too. I've always thought, you know, you hear you go to some of these seminars and stuff, and hear people say, "I charge this, I do that." You know, it's not black and white. You know, somebody may have a budget. And they want you for that budget and they'll pay you for that. That's awesome. But more so than not, people, you have to work around what it might be, you know, or what their needs are if you want the job and you want to stay passionate at it. So do the job, be happy with it and be willing to make it into the gray zone and not the black and white zone. I, I really like that idea that it's not 
it's not black and white. I, I did an episode uh, for Mondays. We do the Monday message, and I just kind of speak a little bit on a topic. And I talked about how to price your first wedding if you're going to go into wedding photography. And basically, I'm really long-winded and ended up saying, I don't have an answer for that, you know? And that's what it comes down to is uh, you can have a good idea about what other people are doing, but you have to find what works for you. And I think it's a really good, oh my gosh, great tip to say, uh, to go out and, and get some business sense a little bit. And uh, if you're looking into taking a, a class or two, take a marketing, marketing class, take a business course, yep. learn yep. some of the basics. Uh, you know, the legal side of it is just enormous, you know, insurance and what you need to, to run a business is huge. And we kind of we kind of love taking pictures. We love the creating. We love the art of it. And then we really lose sight of the fact that, oh my gosh, I got to run a business too. That's, that's pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yep. I mean, if you, if you love business and you love doing that about 80% of the time, you know, and you want to take pictures about 10% of the time, become a photographer. It's, it's perfect for you. Um, but if you want to become a photographer and just take pictures, find the way it's going to work for you and, and see, see if it's really the, the best opportunity to take it on as a full-time thing or take it as a sidepreneurial thing, you know, a uh, night and weekend job. I, I don't know. Um, you know, Pablo Picasso, from what I understand, uh, was a great businessman too. And he did things because he knew it would bring his value up and he made good money at what he did. So if you read any of his books, I think, you know, you, you learn that you can still be an artist and still make money too. Right. Right. Do, do you have an app or an internet resource that you think photo world could benefit from knowing about? You know, one of the, this was early on, I'm sure there's more out there, but one of the best ones that's helped me with my business has been uh, Blinkbid. They uh, mainly, they were made by photographers. It was, uh, and they've kind of grown a little bit with it too, and they, they do good stuff. And it helped me understand the business part of it. It's a software basically for estimating and billing. Okay. And, um, it really gave me a uh, better insight on what, on how, what things cost, you know, what I was making. And they also, I mean, they don't, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, you're supposed to know what you want to make profit, what your time is worth on that job before you go into it. And, and then you say, okay, I want to make a thousand dollars on this job. Then you do all your expenses around that thousand dollars that you want to make. Right. No, that that's cool that there's a tool. I got to check it out. And uh, Photo World, you know, you'll find these on on Paul's show notes page. Uh, just type Paul in the search bar, and his show notes will pop up. We'll have blank bet on there, along with the links to find him and what he's doing. Um, but yeah, I got to take a look at that because it sounds like a little bit more than uh, an invoicing software. You know, it sounds like they they kind of give you a better uh, idea about you know you you come up with the numbers, but when you're pricing, consider this. You know. Yeah, and it, it it has places you can do a production estimate so that you can place all your all your receipts in and your real nice. e your real receipts your 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 estimated receipts. So my taxes won't take two months to do; they'll just be a few days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly. So, uh, but I think that works. That was probably one of the best investments that I ever made uh, at that point. The other thing that we're I'm I'm having a hard time with uh, software wise is. Is uh, you know I was um, early on with uh, Aperture and actually even with Lightroom when they first came out. But I had always been a Mac-based person, mm -hmm. and uh, we had Lightroom come to our old studio when it was first coming out, and they did it you know with the uh, American uh, ASMP. Yeah, and uh, and I thought it was cool, but I still liked Aperture a little better, and I liked what it did. So I just kind of stuck with Aperture. And now that I found out that Aperture isn't going to update their software much anymore, I had to start digging into it. And I and I went to Lightroom, and it's taken me a little bit of time. And there's things I like and don't like, but um, it's uh, it's doing what I need it to do. So right. I don't know why I brought that up, but I, <laughs> software, that was it. <laughs> Paul, we're about to wrap it up here. But before we go, could you please share with Photo World one parting piece of guidance and then the best way we can find you, whether it be your website or some sort of social media, and then we'll say goodbye. Uh, I think we've, I, I think I've said everything that I think I can say. So, uh, I mean, just uh, be passionate about what you do, be true to yourself and, um, 
And remember, the secret is there are no secrets. <laughs> and if you want to get hold of me, um, I am my Instagram account is Audia Vision A U D I A V I S I O N. And if you want to see some of the stuff I've been doing consistently, that's probably the best place to see it. I my website is audia.net, A U D I A dot net, and my Facebook is uh, Audia Motion and Still. Very, very cool. And Photo World, you know, we'll have those links and uh, the the website for sure and everything to to make sure you can see Paul's work and follow along on his Instagram and Twitter. Um, but Paul, I cannot thank you enough for your time today and sharing such great value. Photo World thanks you and happy shooting. Thank you. Are you looking for a way to make your images pop to that next level? Head to TakeAndTalkPics.com, go to the affiliates page, and from there, you will see Free Vault Photography products. We have worked out a special deal with Free Vault Photography products, so you can get 15% off your next purchase. Just enter Take and Talk 15. Spell it out, Take and Talk, then the number 15. Hey, Photo World, thank you for tuning in to another episode here on Take and Talk Picks. I will see you next time, and happy shooting.